Oh. <laughs> Christine is um, not going to be here. OK, we're ready. All right, um, we'll call the meeting of Parks and Rec Commission to order May 9th. Um, let's do roll call. Here. Thank you. And I'm, I'm filling in for uh, Chair Kwong. Um, all right. Do we have any public comment that came in? And no one is here for comment. Thank you. Let's start with City Council liaison communication. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Commissioner Communications. Thank, thank you for doing that. I Um, and uh, uh, of course, I have something <laughs> um, uh, that was from a resident, a few residents. Um, I guess, well, one thing is um, Eddie Park, folks were asking again about those signs about the private property on the wall. So I don't know if we have any. Sheila, if anything ever happened with that. We're not still at the, it's not in the Okay, got it, in progress. Um, and the second thing, which is kind of ironic based on our last, last request we had to consider an off-leash dog area, <laughs> is that there have been some complaints from folks about the uh, informal, off-leash dog situation at Garfield every day from five to seven. And the request was, could we put in a fenced in area, like a dog run within Garfield to try to solve that issue? Because there are times, there's been some issues, I guess, with off-leash dogs chasing kids or people, you know, and other people with That's dogs. people go to Orange Grove because there's no kids in the <laughs> so I, I uh, said I would pass it along to, to the commission for, um, for discussion because it's, we know it's happening, oh. you know, every day. It's and a thing. And at Eddie. At and the, at and Eddie. Royal. Yes. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I don't know if that is a possibility, if that's something that's ever been discussed before. Not really. Just, um. When we started looking at dog parks, when we did look at that area, it's just there's not enough space to fence off that we could say it could be a dog park area because like that upper flat area would be where we would offer all our classes. And then the, the area where the concert, you know, so there's like des there's spaces that are kind of designated. We can't use up off of park, you know, with that, the, what was it, the, the wood, chips are there that's like an edison easement so we can't touch that so there's it's just so hard to pick a spot on that park to to do it that's why you know everybody wanted the dog park more central but it was just not feasible so, so is there anything we can do about enforcement okay. you know i can you know we can i can um i can try and go out there a few times and talk to the people um and then after that it'll just be uh, the humane society coming out yeah, the group, when we discussed this last time, it was really one of those things that, you know, it's changing the municipal code, um, you know, 
the city taking on more liability and will people actually, I mean, because people come during the day as well. So it's not just in the morning, um, but you see people on the park there during the day. There's usually no one else there. Um, but Garfield, there's just tons of people and tons of kids. That's what really shocks me. But um, I think we were getting ready for like a concert. I can't remember what we were doing there later. Maybe it was a concert last year and there were just so many. I mean, I walked on the park and there were people like, what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah. My little guys are like, get me off my leash. I was like, oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I will, let me, let me just kind of look into it and see if there's anything that, you know, uh, I can run it by the city manager. And just... Thank you. Uh -huh. That's great. I, I will pass that along. Um, welcome, Vice Chair Rocha. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We understand. Do you want to take over? Or do you, I, I've been oh, subbing in. Oh, hold on. Let me find my agenda. You want to keep going? Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. We are on item four, staff liaison communication. Um, so just an update. Um, thank you for um, last meeting, Lucy, everybody, uh, for handling the meeting last time. Um, since then, we um, did have our egg hunts. We had about 1,500 people in attendance, if not more. We had over 500 tickets sold. Um, which was really good. Um, majority of them were online, but we had many people come the day of, probably about 100 people. Um, we had actually taken our, um, one of our laptops and uh, you know used our little Wi-Fi thing and did um, credit card sales for the first time. Um, people like that because not everybody has the cash. And we didn't have exactly all the ones because it was $16 and it was like, oh no, you know, trying to grab people. So um, it worked. It was just, we didn't have a swiper. So we have to manually do it every time. So we're looking into a faster, easier way for that doing um, on-site registration if need be. Otherwise we end up with a lot of cash and it's better not to have on hand. Um, we had Be Kind to Animals um, night on mon last Monday night. We had about uh, 50 posters from local kids from K through eight. Um, Councilmember Donovan and our mayor showed up to hand out certificates and have pictures with the kids. Um, it was a really nice event. Um, this is part of the decommissioning of Animal Commission who used to be doing do Be Kind to Animals. And the first time we've taken it on, um, and so they, and prior to COVID, would almost have 150, 200 posters. So we had 50, which is small, but I thought, well, it was the first for us, um, getting used to it, getting it out on the schools, kind of the transition from Animal Commission to you know, the Community Services Commission. <laughs> uh, so it was good. It was a nice event. And then we had Doggy Day on Saturday um, for two hours. It was a, a smaller event. Um, we had about 500 people and pets, lots of dogs. Um, most of those were on leashes. So <laughs> one lady who just let her dog wander around everywhere and people were like, whose dog is this? Whose dog is this? And she was just da, da, da. Uh, but it was nice. We had disc dogs, you know, so it was fun. They she'll throw the Frisbees and they run up over people's shoulder, their shoulders. And um, people really love watching them. We had a few vendors, the Pasadena Humane Society. Um, so it was a nice event. It was a really nice event. Um, this weekend, um, though it is not my event, it is a city co-sponsored event, Party Gras, the golf course. Um, weekend after, we have the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage event at Garfield Park from 11 to 3. It is not obviously our community services event, but we, it is a co-sponsored event by the city. Um, so that one I'm sure is going to pack in a lot of people that day. It seems like they have so much entertainment, so many things for kids to do. So it might be a nice one to kind of just walk through the park, but I'd say walk from wherever you live because I might be a little crowded. Um, then Memorial Day, we as a department do our uh, Memorial Day event. Um, so if you are home Memorial Weekend and want to be part of a, you know, a small celebration, we will be at War Memorial at nine o'clock. Um, and we just um, talked to our police chief who um, helped us uh, acquire a friend of his that will is a Navy SEAL and um, will actually bring his canine with him. So we're, the mayor is looking to not only the human side of veterans, but adding the, um, the animals into it as well. So it'll be the first time doing that. So it'll be nice. So if you have time, stop by. 
Um, I know I have a lot, but I want to get it all to you. Um, please mark your calendars for June 22nd, the Wednesday night, 6 p.m. It's our commission Congress. Um, Dolly, you are welcome. Don't think you're not off commission just yet. Um, <laughs> it's a dinner and um, we'll be doing the dinner and um, presenting kind of our um, annual report um, and work plan kind of, sort of, because I'm like, how do I do it when I have four different ones? Now it's one. So, um, but it will be a nice event. It'll be kind of that way to be recognized as you're going off but then your continued recognition for staying on. Um, and then our first concert starts on June 26th. I couldn't tell you the band. I just wanted to make sure the date was out because that's when they went out to Melissa. Um, so we are starting to rock and roll here. We have something every weekend in May. <laughs> June, we do start Camp Med the second week of June, so it's early. Um, so we have a lot going on and um, the May, I want to say May 18th meeting is when they'll bring the um, Community Services Commission, the formation of, um, and so uh, they will bring, not the bylaws, like the charge of the group, um, and so we will have one position for Animal Commission, Youth Commission, and Senior, and then our commission. So, um, you know, if it's your turn to cycle off, you'll be cycling off. If you, um, I don't, not sure if Christine's going to stay on. I know she is running for the um, PCC uh, Board of Trustees. Um, and I, she's been really busy with that. That's why you haven't seen her. So um, she did say in her email that she'd make it next month, but we will probably not be having June's meeting so that we can return, um, make sure we get the uh, information in the new committee form. So it will meet on the same night, the second Monday. Same spot, same time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, not yet. No, they have to form it first, then appoint. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, and I, I think that is all. Thank you. That was a lot, but I wanted wow. to. Thank you to, to get you, everything to you and your department for all of that. <laughs> yeah. Work. Are you fully staffed? Um, we are fully staffed with our full-time people, but we are in dire need of part-time staff. So if you know a high school kid who's 16, who's looking for a job, please tell them to apply to be a recreation leader. Yeah. You, they can just work in the summer and then go to college or go back away to school and then come back again. And if they're local, they can just work special events, you know, on, on a weekend or maybe a rental now and then on a Saturday night, have a little money on their own, but you're all so desperate and for part-time. Do you take interns who are younger than 16 or they have to be 16? We don't have a, uh, we hire the interns and they need to be in college. Okay. So um, also, and I did not really mention the other side of things and which shame on me because Melissa's sitting in the audience. Um, our senior center had um, on Monday the 16th, we open up for our on-site lunches again. We're really excited. We just had our Mother's Day luncheon on Thursday, and we had um, just about, what, 180? 83. Um, so we were really excited. They were really excited just to be back, to be outside, to be with everybody, just having a good time. So it was so nice to see. Uh, we are up and running with all our programs at the senior center it's just getting seniors to come out so we're hoping with the lunch program they'll feel a little bit more confident to come out um, we still will do home delivery for those who need it but um, we are in person lunch starting on the we still don't have a site manager but you will see all of us serving lunch so please if you like to have lunch come join us <laughs> remember you don't have to have a senior you just have to pay full price <laughs> so thank you for that <laughs> Um, anyone have questions about that? This isn't a, I don't think this is like a Parks yeah. and Rec thing, but I was curious, the Eclectic Music Festival two weekends ago, was the city at all involved in that? The, it's, the a co process, it's a co-sponsored, it's a co-sponsored, um, our, mostly our public works, um, making sure, you know, streets, closures, um, trash during the day, but really they, Chamber does a lot and with having 626 the next day, uh -huh. they, um, they use the same company to do all their street closures, barricades, because it just kind of pulled them off the side and put them right back out, right, type of thing. I just want to say the Eclectic Music Festival, I unfortunately was unable to attend, but a friend all the way 
from like the West Hollywood area came out. I mean, there's like definitely a draw. And yeah. I just think like it's yes. something for the city to be proud of, but including 66 too. Like that, yeah. all that work that was done with the city and the cog to make yeah. that happen. I just, both events, right. I hear through my job just such glowing reviews from a totally different city. Right. So, because our first one we did was to you guys, wasn't it? Didn't like Sam? we did that really long one all yeah. the way. All the yeah. way to Doherty. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I wasn't this, around for yeah. that. But it was, yeah, it was like a this was great. We went 16th. to it. Oh, and yeah. Biked down and it, it was so much fun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I mean, there were people who definitely came from all over. From all over. I mean, it's amazing it was a draw. lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. It was really great. Yeah. So uh, both events had tons of people in town. Um, it's, it's just been really busy for, I mean, not really my staff that weekend, but for like this guy coming out to every event and every meeting and it's a lot and plus all the meetings they go to all day long it's it, it's it it's a lot it's nice that you could just walk but you were real close yeah just walk and go back home and relax <laughs> no, i went to my thing. office and relaxed and came back <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. well thank you yeah um so going on to item number five approval of the april 11 2022 meeting minutes do i have a motion Yes. Yes. Thank you. For item number six, the discussion and recommendation regarding the field maintenance schedule. I'll turn it over to staff. Uh, Lucy, will you be taking that one? Good evening, commissioners. In your packet is the field maintenance schedule. And for this time around, staff is uh, recommending a one year field maintenance schedule so that we can evaluate the process to see if it meets the needs of our users, as well as allowing enough time for the field to rest and germinate and be maintained properly. So here we have a proposed schedule to close Orange Grove November 28th of this year through January of 2023. Arroyo South, December 5th, 2022 through January 24th, 2023, as well as again, July 25th through August 26th of this year. Um, so again, this is something we wanna evaluate to see if this is enough time and if it meets the needs of the community, the needs of the programs with AYSON Little League and of course city maintenance uh, concerns. And that, concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions the commissioners may have. It's with the orange fencing. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a permanent fencing, just temporary fencing. And we put signage all around. We do find some people on the fields and we politely ask them to leave. Sometimes they're nice enough to leave. Sometimes they're not, which is okay. But we try our best to do what we can with the resources we have. <laughs> so, it's not new lawn. They will be putting in new seeds, and uh, they need to do the top filler, the top soil, and it needs a couple of weeks. And hopefully, we'll have good rain and good sun so that it takes care of the needs. Yeah. 
down. Try everybody really tries hard. No, it's pretty good. Really try to do it. <laughs> Next summer, I'll start. If you are we, um, yeah, I mean, looking at it with like with both organizations. It's not the ideal time. It's not, not the, it's not the growing time for yeah. grass. Um, it's just between AYSO and Little League. Um, one literally starts March 1st and in September, August 30th. The other one starts September 1 and ends on February 28th. Um, and so if we say, okay, just run your normal season, not all stars, not all this other stuff, it might be able to happen, but it's, it's just not that way anymore. There's spring league and there's all kinds of just different things, summer ball. So um, we, in the past, I think when I first got here, we finally got a schedule and we do three years in a row on maintenance. And then now it's like, we can't, COVID came. We were like, oh, perfect time to close down. Landcare had sick people and not enough workers. And so it just never happened. And so we're trying to get back into it. Um, and um, the one, the hardest thing is, is, Land care is kind of what we call blow and mow. They're not baseball official or, you know, and, and soccer, you know, people that know how to maintain these well manicured sports fields. Um, and they're in our contract is not, we don't have that. This is a time that, you know, we do have time that we let the field rest and that they do certain things to them, um, but we're not. And if you walked on Arroyo North or South, you know, it does this. And so when you see mow, even though they try and mow low, so you see the, the topped off white grass and then you see the nice flush green because it goes downhill and the mower can't get down there. So it's, it's we're trying. Um, I know AYSO just wants us to hire like this really great person that knows only how to do sports fields, but we'll never be able to pay for it. I mean, we cut so much out of Landcare's budget three years ago because we couldn't afford doing everything. Um, and so, and also just things are getting more expensive. Um, so we are trying our best working with both. That's why you see this, because we just need to plan at least through the end of this year to know where, okay, what's going to be closed and what they need to put on their schedule and what we have so that AYS and Little League can plan around it, you know, their, their season. So. And why isn't Arroyo North on here? <sighs> because it's been, it's very controversial. Oh, and so we're going to try and all play nice in the sandbox, but yeah. sometimes sand gets thrown. <laughs> yeah. It's just in the past that we had it before the pandemic. Right. So they use it.
There have been a lot of meetings. <laughs> I had a question. Yeah. I kept you on the last one. I was like, let me just hear what they have to say. <laughs> so we had, we had our own. Yes, you did. They, thank you for keeping me out of that one. <laughs> I didn't want to be in the fire, but it's always a big thing. And, you know, Little League has what, six, 700 players. AYSO has over like 2,000, but it's a region. It's not South Pass. Like Little League is South Pass. So, you know, I, I'm like, where do you play in San Marino? Where, you know, and they're at the schools, they're in San Marino schools, they're on our school. So they cover ground. You know, um, and we're not the only city that has this problem. One of our workers, Natalie, our supervisor in rec, she plays for East Downey Little League and she plays in Norwalk. You know, so it's just where they get field space. It's, it's happening kind of everywhere. I don't so, have any solution to this, but I had a question about the second yeah. set of dates for the Royal South, uh -huh. the July to August dates. Um, they know. Talking about like this germination of the fields and rain. There's not really a lot of rain that time of year, uh -huh. but also with the new drought measures that are coming into place, everything's like going to be difficult, right? That yeah, was I mean, the meeting there, I had. Does it behoove it to still close at that time if you're not having any sort of either natural or even you know sprinkler system being able to do anything to those fields? I've been working with Public Works on. I want. I'm trying to better understand their water schedule, um, and so they're trying to get their water schedule down now with everything. Like today I got to Orange Grove Park, it was 7.25 and, the, and part of the field sprinklers were on. And I went outside at 11.40 and they were still going. I mean, just different spots throughout the park. And I was like, I thought they were more on, I mean, they were like 40, uh, when I got there, I, I walked the dogs and I came back and they were still on. And I was like, that's the same three sprinklers on for at least 30 minutes. So I had called Public Works. I called public works before going, hey, I think that we're not sprinklers on. They're usually never in the middle of the day. And they're like, oh, they're testing. My, but there's nobody physically here to test anything, to look at anything. So I don't know what they're looking at. And they just kept going and going. And I mean, it cycled through all the different ones, but they stayed on for a good 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but the ground is really hard. So I don't know if they need to aerate it and so the water can get into it, but it's just, it's, it's just, but that is something we're trying to work on to see where we're going to be with this watering yeah. and how it it will or will not work. Hot months, like yes, exactly. We're closing the field if right. it's not going to result in anything. Right. Well, well, the use, is, really, is, sure, so. the, the break from the, because the, the fields get, especially from soccer, get so much. And it's not just AYSO, right? It's all no, yes. adult leagues sure. and all the, That's it's like the constant. It's, I know, I know. <laughs> Where? And these are adult leagues. Yeah, these are adult leagues. I can leave a council meeting, and even though the field lights are off at Orange Grove, the light that illuminates the playground area, it's like a security light, they play in the little spot of that light. And it's dark. <laughs> But your, for your answer, yes, we are, we're trying to determine the watering system. Because I know AOISO actually wanted to resod, like lay new sod this summer on south. And I was like, I don't want you to waste your money if it can't be watered. You know, why? So. It's that side. They did that. They did it a couple of years back and it's been pretty, yeah, right before. Yeah. The gophers, yeah. 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 So we're working on it, but that is factoring into what type of maintenance will take place then. Any discussion or a motion?
second. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item seven, summer events, subcommittee discussion and recommendation on summer events and activities. Turning it over to our subcommittee, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to have Melissa Schneider, our oh. senior center supervisor. You're going to start seeing these guys a lot more often with this bigger commission. They're all going to have their role. Yes, I'm really excited. I'm excited for those meetings. It'll be fun in here. Um, but good evening, commissioners. Thank you for having me tonight. I just want to provide a brief update on where we're at with summer events and then get a little feedback from you all. So this summer, we're going to have three movies and four concerts. So kind of changing it up a little bit in the past, we've done five concerts and two movies. Um, we're looking to have a little something for everyone this summer. So we'll have four bands. We're looking for a swing band, a Latin jazz band, a classic rock. And then we added what we called an other category, which is actually where our top favorite pick is. Um, so we're looking to bring in, it's called Hit Me 90s. Um, so it'll be a 90s band with Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, lots of fun stuff, in addition to kind of what we usually have with the classic rock and the, the Latin and the swing. So we're looking to book them first and then fill in the other dates elsewhere. <laughs> um, so I am hoping that that all goes smoothly and we can have them. Um, and then for our movies, we're looking to do two kind of family friendly movies, which um, our top picks were Encanto and Spider-Man No Way From Home, because I know those are very popular. But then we're also looking to do kind of a throwback option as well. So more of an adult throwback movie. And so that's where we're looking for a little bit of feedback from you all, because this is the first time we're going to offer this. Um, so Commissioner Ocon, thank you. His top two picks were Grease and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, so those were the top ones, but we also have on the list La La Land, um, Footloose, and Casablanca. So if you guys had any thoughts on that, or if there was any other suggestions, we would like to hear them before we, we try to schedule all of those. We're thinking this more of the adult, older, you know, kind of an adult night instead of having to have, you know, a kid's movie, something different. I enjoy going to the movies in, um, on the beach when they have them. And so they've done like Casablanca and they're just kind of fun, different, you know? Um, so I, they're, I'm making them do a movie for adults. <laughs> I throw all my suggestions out there as a recommendation for our next Back to the Future? I think that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Because it was filmed on my block. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I know, we were thinking, I was thinking La La Land because it's in the city so too, fun. but yeah. that's a good one. Too. Those are all. Do we know what that's rated? Those are all really good. But Back to the Future is probably a little bit more kid, like yeah. So kids can go, but yeah. everybody. I know the thing is, we were looking at language. Right? Yeah. And so I want a law lamb, but it does say the F word once, and so it's like, oh. Um, but yeah, we were we were going through them like how many times does this bad word come up? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you want to be. We might put a disclaimer <laughs> on the flyer. <laughs> we'll put the ratings. Yeah, um, no. But no, Back to the Future. I didn't even think of that one. Well, and I think if you look, like, I don't feel like, yeah, it's local, like filmed here. And if you want to, like, build it to be some more, like, interactive, like, having a conflict between the two stuff, like, what their bad science, their best bad science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really like <laughs> yeah. That was a fun movie. I can add that to the list for sure. I also just have to double check to make sure we can get licensing right. for it. Okay. Um, so if it's on the list, do we want our top two to be Back to the Future and Greece for that day and then see what we can get? I know. <laughs> those are good? Yeah. Okay, thank you, I'll add those. <laughs> Anything else, any questions, comments? Will we also be doing Shakespeare in the Park. Oh, yes. Maybe I should give you guys the dates. Um, we can probably also have Israel send an email with all the dates, but the movies are scheduled for Fridays and they'll be June 17th, July 8th, and July 22nd. Um, they start at sundown or sunset. So 
So whenever that time runs around. And then our concerts will be on Sundays. Um, they'll be June 26th, July 10th, July 31st, and August 7th. And then Shakespeare in the Park is July 23rd and 24th. Sound right? The Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. 23rd, 24th. Perfect. I hope to see you all there and party with me. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Um, she's, we just wanted to kind of bring something up because uh, we're working on it and trying to, you know, now it's just booking and all that kind of stuff. And also to add in one more summer event. So, um, as you, Yes, yes, and we feel it. So it's not a new one, it's an old one, 4th of July. So don't forget, 4th of July, we have our pancake breakfast with Kiwanis here in the fire station starting, I think at 7 a.m. going till 10. And the parade is back. The parade is back. So we will meet over, I think at Library Park at, I think they're gonna schedule it at, no, 10.30? It was 1030 and then they um, to get in their cars 11 we meet for the, the community room do the opening um, and then the parade will start and then it'll go to Garfield Park with games and food and that'll go till about 330 ish and then the doors at this high school open I want to say 530 with some entertainment and that is where another one of our concerts will be so we are doing five concerts they just don't know that but they do now. Um, but we will actually be looking more for an in-town band. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can call him. Look at her. <laughs> I called him. <laughs> she does that when her eyes start twitching. She's getting like, oh no, what else? Um, but, and then the fireworks show. And so the city actually will be approving, a well, may approve the budget. And if they do, the city will be taking over the 4th of July events from parade, games, and fireworks show. Um, we will continue to have the Festival of Balloons Committee, but it's the same people who started it back when Ted Shaw started it like 30 some, 40 years ago, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and, you know, if I was that, I, you know, doing some of those things, I don't enjoy doing them anymore either. And so, and we don't have a lot of younger families coming in and wanting to be a part. Um, so it will give them probably a little bit more help on our side, financially is one thing, um, as well as staffing um, and a, helping with a lot of the events. So we, it will be busy, not just for our department, and police, fire, and uh, public works will be a big part because they're, they're always a part of street closures and things like that. We will do a bigger step um, into the event by planning the whole thing with the uh, those who remain on the Festival of Blooms Committee and then hoping people, residents will think, oh, good, it's not just us. We'll volunteer for the event. We'll help, you know, we're going to be in town or something and pe more people will come on board. Um, and so that could be coming our way as a group. Um, one thing that did get approved on Wednesday night um, was a theatrical presentation um, that our mayor has wanted for a while. So it'll be on July 3rd. It'll be a theatrical presentation revolving around the American Revolution and kind of where our country was at that time. Um, and so Lisa and Jim Reynolds will be writing and directing and producing it. Um, they'll have music. It'll have a video. There'll be a film about like um, the Oneida tribe, uh, Indian tribe and a Q&A, and then they'll do music, poetry, and then presentations, like one, uh, one man um, acts, um, or maybe two. And um, so it'll be start at 6.30, and then it'll probably be done about 9, 9.30, so at the high school theater. So, um, so um, we are, that's a, added that's the added so but lots of things going on but you will get an email with everything 
because there's too much to write down. <laughs> I forgot to even write it down. I was like, I just right went past. Forget for the lie. It's all good. So it, there's a lot, but um, that's another thing. So um, uh, we will be selling tickets through our online uh, registration. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can actually just purchase them and then your receipt can just stay on your phone. You can show you that or you can actually print it out and show it at the door, but it's it'll be hopefully much easier where you don't have to actually go to the Y or to City Hall or the Senior Center to buy a ticket. It's just go online. Fourth of July, the fireworks show. Oh, okay. Yeah, when sorry about that. We are probably going to do the first week, but first day of camp is June 8th. June 26th? You're going to give 6th. I thought you said 26, no. June 6th, June 6th, to give a kind of a, a month time to do that. And we're working on all the publicity for all the events. It's just a lot. We will be doing, we'll, well, we'll do the, the, the city scoop. We'll do all our social media. We will do flyers. We'll do posters in like the businesses and things around town. Mm -hmm. For concerts and Fourth of July, just like we always do, hoping to get somewhat normal again. So, I think that's it. We're done. I know. I'm excited. Thank <laughs> you. School year will start all over again. <laughs> so, moving on to item eight: discussion recommendation regarding the Garfield Park Five. And again, I am handing this over to Ismail. Thanks for waiting for me on this. No problem. You can present there if you if it's easier. Can you have a switcher to switch your PowerPoint or is that Lucy? Perfect. Lucy can do it. Arrow. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on, but we can hear Oh, sorry. Yes, you may. <laughs> I told Thank you. 
I was going to say, it's Ted and Joan in this picture. <laughs> I write, I wrote down about Ted and Joan are in this picture. I don't believe there was an issue. I'll let Karen go ahead because Karen did bring this forward. Yeah. Thank you for doing this research. Um, so the, the residents who brought it to my attention also um, shared a number of academic, you know, a number of academic articles that reference um, these Americanism centers. And this was not the only one, they were across the country. And the John Birch Society was an extreme far right conservative group that was very vocal in its kind of racist and anti-civil rights positions, in addition to being extremely anti-communist. Most Republicans, even at that time, distanced themselves from that society because it was so fringe, even, at, even in the 60s and 70s. So, the um, I think the concern among some residents today is that having the Americanism Center featured on this plaque, not to take away from honoring the service people or our veterans, but they would like to add some context to better explain where this comes from. And so all of these quotes, you know, and how Jane Crosby won that award, you know, at that time, our, you know, society didn't see anything wrong with certain views that she also was quoted as saying. So she called Martin Luther King a communist. She promoted textbooks in the state of California that called black children pickaninnies. She was on like a statewide commission, you know, so at the time, right, like she was held up as, as, um, you know, a, a wonderful, you know, exemplary member of our community. And she probably did a lot of things that were helpful to, at that time, at that time to some in the community, but certainly not to all. And um, there are a lot of those views, which today, I think we would agree, our city would not say that we stand for. And so um, I know, I think the question is, right, like, what do you do? Right, like what, what is our kind of response? 
And in my view, and I think that, you know, this, where this came also from some of the residents, if there's a way for us to just provide information, right, the way that the city council just condemned our history um, as a sundown town, right, where black people were not allowed after the sun went down, there's a way I think that we can add information about these darker parts of our history and say that, you know, we still, we honor our veterans, we support, you know, the, these good things, but that South Pasadena does not stand for, you know, hate, essentially, right? So if there's a way to add that kind of information to our website or, you know, somewhere, like even having students get involved, you know, and adding, you know, or doing some kind of explanation or, you know, adding something, not necessarily taking away. I think as part of the, the kind of reckoning around race that came up during the protest a few years ago, I think that's where people started to look around, you know, in, in ways that are happening on a much larger scale across the country, right, with mon monuments and, and statues. And, you know, this is a small, you know, kind of minor example of that, but it is tied to a similar kind of path. It's on, um, obviously, on Garfield Park, on Mission, where the Rose Garden is. It's right in the Rose Garden. So when, you know how it kind of does a, uh, so when you're walking straight down that path, if you just went straight and not turn right or left, you'd run right into it. It's about, yeah. It's on a, a big slab. <laughs> it's the sign itself. It's probably it's on a rock. Yeah, big rocks about gay high. And, uh, let's say it's you know might spread at six foot. Let's say it's about four foot across. I mean it's a big boulder, okay? And it's you know rough. It's a rough boulder. It's just black. It's embedded in like we've seen embedded in many other boulders those rough years. Karen, I, I, you know, as we liage on, I, I really got to be careful about getting involved in this discussion. But let's back up a little bit. If somebody had to bring this to somebody to get it this far, okay? And I mean, that's the history I'd like to hear the council has. <clears throat> Why are we discussing this? I think. I think Dolly, the way I, I think you, do you agree with what I'm Because I want, <clears throat> yeah. I think Why are we discussing this? We are discussing this. Um, <clears throat> a, a resident came to their commissioner yeah. and asked about this plaque and re did research on the plaque. And so Karen came to this commission and got a second to have it on the agenda. And that's why we are discussing. Where does it go from here? It, it, this commission has to figure out, make their recommendation to move forward with, you know, either, you know, like Karen said, like we talked about a QR code, we talk, we could talk about putting this uh, page on our uh, web page, um, you know, and there might be other plaques around town too that would, could be looked into to make it like more of a historical page. So, you know, if somebody is looking, they see this thing, they know they can go and look on our website. Um, I think it it's a way to, um, you know, I think, yes, it was back then this lady was very, you know, you know, racist, but I think there's, I think we've gotten out of that and we're moving forward, you know, on that and we're trying to make change slowly. And maybe that's kind of, you know, how we do it. Maybe it's more something that, you know, uh, with this arts commission, if they're going to do a, uh, working on this public the public art policy that something can be included where you know history of plaques is kept somewhere because really it was you know we get requests all the time 
and there's only certain things that I know about. Like we have the, is it the Bill of Rights or something that's over in the plaza area by the gold line? And it's all the kids know. But you know who put it there? Dave Margrave. And so there's three giant, just like this thing, three giant boulders. And the two of them are full, and one of them just has one sentence, and then it's totally blank. You know, everyone's asked, like, just get rid of it, Sheila. Why do we have this here? I'm like, I'm touching it, you know, because <laughs> the flagpole's in the middle of it. You know, and I was like, we could have such a bigger park area, Sheila. And I'm like, I'm touching it. <laughs> Again, I'm not touching it. <laughs> no one's come to me <laughs> or come to a commission and asked to touch it, <laughs> you know. But someone has brought it to a commissioner and now is asked, you know, asked about it. So, you know, is it something, you know, that I can take to, you know, our city manager and say, okay, this has come up. It was brought through a resident to a commissioner. The commissioner got a second. We did discuss this. Um, we have or have not reached a decision because we don't know exactly what decision that should be. Um, and then maybe get more of a thought and idea. And I can bring back, if, you know, what her idea might be. And her idea might be the public art commission to where we start creating if you know if this is how uh, if everything's going through you know the public arts commission then it, it and its policy is going to be created then maybe there's a policy that if now if plaques come into the city you know because it's kind of a maybe it's not public art but it is an expression or they want a flagpole that represents a service well there's you know war memorial how many do we have you know, that are on the ground there. How'd they get approval? I don't know, <laughs> you know, but it's the same thing. But keeping the history, it's important, right? Like it's right. important for us because, and whenever we're gone, right? We want the generations to come to know the reason why things were done and to understand good or bad, right? And everything's com complicated, right? But to understand what was going on at the time. And we don't want to lose that. I mean, it's the history of any city. I mean, I live in Downey and you know, we were sent downtown, I mean, and it was the whitest city, you know, and it's predominantly Hispanic now. You look at Compton, my aunt and uncle, my mom, I was born in Compton, you know, community hospital. I mean, and it's, you don't find white people there anymore. This whole demographic has just, everything has changed so much. So it's just kind of that way to keep the history. So, right or wrong, I don't know, but it's something that we could just move forward, as I said, maybe I take it to the city manager, we discuss and figure out you know, where maybe it could go. And if she says, you know, it's not going anywhere, I will come back and let you guys know that. I think they, they actually suggested the QR code, you know, adding something like a little something, you know, that leads them you point to a your path. phone at yeah. it, right? And then it brings up like a page of history. You know, and that's where I was thinking it would be kind of cool to get high school kids, you know, who I know have, because I've seen in the, self, uh, in the high school newspaper, they have documented a lot of the history of the town around laws, around policies around race. And it might be kind of a good connection, you know, to have that, to have them do a more comprehensive history that includes a mention of this, right? And if you point your phone at that, at that code, then it'll bring you or even just under the city's website somewhere, right? Just having information, just to give people right. content and information. It's not, yeah, that it's QR not political, code right? Community. It's not like telling people what to think about it. It's instead just explaining what it is. And it gives you information and that's how people you know, make their own decisions, right? I appreciate that the request from the resident was not removal because that yeah. is the extreme. Like when yes, you look at right. the examination of what's happening across the country and the extreme is, you know, tear, tear statues down. Yeah. There's plenty of articles out there that say in tearing statues down, you don't put them into a museum and you give no information in yeah. terms of like how we got here. So I appreciate that the resident <clears throat> that came to you has a very tempered response to what should be happening with this plaque, which is not remove it because this person, you know, stood for this, but as you said, it's nuanced. They, they serve the city in some ways. So it's a matter of, the education around it in the context. I think the just speaking practically about the uh, practicality of the QR code. I mean, I even look at this plaque now, and I actually go like, whose whose job is it to maintain the plaque as it is currently, right? And I think a QR code is an added difficulty um, 
in that. I don't think the city ultimately wants to do too much directly to the plaque or the rock because you start taking on them some responsibility, which is also almost passive endorsement, right? But having something like on the website, so when that resident does call or come to you or anybody else, um, there's a direction to point to. There's a historical society for South Pass, right? Where are they? It's the South Pasadena Preservation Foundation. Yeah, and they, they um, we have not had a conversation with them, okay. but it's something that, that could be brought to because them. Because when you're talking about to creating the public art creating policies, part of a, a you know, preservation society, they're, working off of hopefully nationwide or potential international standards of what you do in matters like this that may have some guiding tools for this conversation as well. That's a thought. No, that's good. Yeah, no, that's very good. Yes. I gotta bring up some things I do know about that here. Just coincidentally that I have to be <clears throat> chair of the Arts and Rec Commission at Rose was authorized <clears throat> and was built and was put in. And it took about, oh, from, from the concept to going in, it took about two years. At that same time, the last position uh, I had as Parks and Rec Chair was dedication, I wouldn't call it dedication, but the opening of the restaurant. Both of those were going simultaneously. Okay? So I'm giving some history here. This was 1997 for the Rose Garden, but that rock with the plaque was 1967. The, the city uh, during that during the whole country during that period of time, uh, you had mentioned service of death, implying that it was the current service of death. Well, that was the Vietnam War in its height. Okay, and 19, probably 1968 was the height of the Vietnam War. 67 was building up to 68, and 69 was all demonstrations against the war. It was a different world. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, I'm the oldest council member, and I, I could, I'm old enough to remember these live. Okay. And I graduated from high school, was in college at that point. So it, it, it fresh in my mind. And at that time, what was going on, and you have this tremendously conservative society wants to put this plaque. How that plaque got in the middle of the Rose Garden, I really don't remember. Okay? <laughs> I guarantee it was not brought up in any of the get around that plaque. <laughs> okay? But I, I did look at the plaque, okay? And then and the only thing I could think about is that they built the Rose Garden. I can remember they had, they had to bring the, the, the uh, plans, etc. Bring it to the, the commission and the Parks and Rec Commission brought it there, got it approved, and then finally back to the council, went through the procedure, what flowers they got, what roses they were going to plant. And 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 now this that rock was never brought up. So <laughs> I, I wonder where it was between 1967 and 19, and it might have been right there, but they would have had to move it to make the rose card. Okay, that could be part of the finding out how it wound up in the middle of, the, of, of that. So um, that 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 rock is a history. Yeah, for sure. And, and that also, rose garden is. And I think it is interesting about. I mean, I, I was a history major and studied a lot about the Vietnam War, although I wasn't alive at the time. But but it is true. You know, at that time there was um, you know such. Fear, right, about communism, and that was the enemy, right? And so, you know, of course, it's it's putting it into context, right? At, at the, you know, that's why the John Birch Society was started, and it's why they started the Americanism centers. Um, but hand in hand with that, right, are some views, many views that, um, you know, are hateful, you know, and are not, you know, things that we would want our city associated with today. So. But I appreciate that for sure. I mean, and, and the history I think is really interesting and important for us and, and our children, right? And their children. Yeah. It was the time that we were actually building bomb shelters in the back during when that society was opening. When I'm looking down, I see 
to you. I know you're younger than me, but I'm telling you, you better keep your mask on. And don't do things for another world. I, I, I had an opportunity to share something that live that you weren't there to describe. I think it's also odd that rock ended up there when it could be in the veterans park. Like, yes. it's, Why there? It's the same placement, but that's my favorite. <laughs> you can speculate where it <laughs> might have been. Right. Yeah. Might have see that is the entrance. Mm -hmm. And the rose garden is the center of the entrance to the beautiful. Right. And the two sides, the street rose garden. Right. And, uh, and you are entering the theme, you're entering the beautiful dark wood box. That was also the entrance before they put the, the rose garden. So you could, you could speculate now. Maybe it's long tonight. I wonder why. Where was it? Where did all this come from? So, Sheila, I'm not sure. For this, we don't really have a recommendation other than just an interest in maybe further information and further suggestion, maybe best practices of how <clears throat> historical society or historic preservation organizations deal with these types of issues. And I guess the discussion also with the city manager. But okay. Any further discussion? Thanks for taking the time. I'm, I'm glad to be able to report back. That we're, you know, we're taking it into consideration and looking at, you know, figuring out what it is. Um, so for item number nine, approval of summer field permits, any discussion or a motion? I do have Lucia Cobian who can give you a brief update or a brief report. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay, perfect. In your packet, you have a request for field usage by two different groups, Camp Adventure Wood, who is a regular user group, and Challenger Sports. For Camp Adventure Wood, um, this is a summer camp that they offer for ages 4 through 13, and they are requesting use of Arroyo Park, the gazebo area, the amphitheater, and the grass area next to the playground. Israel, if I can have you put up the picture of the amphitheater, please. Staff is requesting fee waiver for the amphitheater use for Camp Adventure Wood, as they did repairs to the amphitheater area where they they removed the cracks and the mini potholes from the stage. The stone steps were repaired. They regrouted, centered, and balanced everything. And we have some pictures to show the commission if we're able to pull that up in just a minute. I believe there is a copy in your packet as well. Okay, thank you. So for Camp Adventure with the estimated revenue will be about $6,750. And for Challenger Sports, they are planning to run a three-week summer camp. Uh, it doesn't interfere with any of the uh, regular user groups. And going back to Camp Adventure Wood, one more added thing is they are requesting to have a storage unit delivered to Arroyo Park from June 3rd through August 3rd. That's where they keep all their supplies for the summer. So I know you can hard uh, the pictures that are black and white here. They really took um, time and um, cleaned up those <laughs> that um, amphitheater area. It's and they did a really good job. And uh, I always tell them, I said, you know, there's um, <laughs> little league parents use it to watch their games on that side <laughs> because it's it's like a nice little right yeah, there, it's shaded. A lot of shade. <laughs> um, so it, it they've. They've been with us for, I think, since before I started, but they've always been um, really good at, you know, saying what can we do to help. And so they, 
um, many parts of the SAMHSA team were broken down over years and they, before COVID, they added a little bit and then they, they wanted to add more and then fill in this front planner used to be kind of like dirt and everything. Um, and so they actually just cemented it off and then it put kind of a little step up to the little amphitheater area. So um, they only use it their summer. So then it's there year round for anybody else who, who you know, would like to use it. But I do know that Little he does use it for um, their parents to watch games. <laughs> so it's like a built-in little bleacher there for them. So um, I am waiving the fee for this summer for this amphitheater because we paid nothing. They came in and did it. Um, with their funding, um, but we still have good revenue from them. <laughs> they do use a lot of facilities. They're in San Marino, um, but um, they get a lot of kids here. It, if you see Camp Adventure Wood bands running around town, they're picking the kids up from their homes and bringing them there. So they spend some time here. They go into Pasadena. They go on excursions. And Part of one of those camps that we just can't offer <laughs> to do all that. You know, they go horseback riding, and they do a lot. So, and then the other one is the Challenger. Um, we were mindful though of Little League um, and field use, so um, we have them there um, just during the day, during the three weeks. And um, is this the? special needs group, right? Challenger one? No, this is not the one? Oh, okay. No, I, okay. I was going to ask, but I think it's the... Uh, it's the regular one? So, like, you, uh, they're, I think it's European. Yeah, oh, okay. Come out. And see the, oh. the Challengers are baseball, right? They have the Challengers. The okay. I just wanted to make sure yeah, no, I, I was confused. So. <laughs> I recommend that we approve the uh, permits for both camps. Yes. 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 So, little trash can uh, was the thing that they have there. Oh, the metal you know, with the. the uh -huh. We used to have a hot <laughs> for so we um, we have had the worst time with trash cans and trash because we have the nice trash can. It has a nice top, and the top is about this big. And so then somebody puts the pizza box on it, and then everybody throws their trash above it. Um, and so then people are like, oh, your parks are a mess because then the birds come, and they throw the trash everywhere, and the raccoons at night, and everything else. Um, and so we're, tr we're trying this out. We took them off. Um, and there should be a sleeve in a trash can inside. Right. Okay. And that's what we want to try and see if we're lowering the trash and that was our problem, or if we're just tons of trash, we need even more cleanups. Because even at farmer's market, same thing. You get one container that overlaps those, that circle, uh, you know, that square doesn't get in that circle and, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. And then the trash bag's empty. Oh, <laughs> so it's terrible, but. <laughs> Land care. On weekends, they should be there twice. They should be there in the morning and around one o'clock. Uh, yeah, that's gonna, not having the lid is going to help. Oh, good. So it's a good thing. Okay. I wanted to make sure I was no, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's a good thing because no, these things are driving all of us crazy like to get said, a trash can there. It's full the cool trash. Oversized thing just messes everything Never. up. Nobody wants to uh -uh. move it or throw it away and then no. it piles up and then it starts going to the floor. Yeah. Yes, and we're actually trying to find new um, inserts into those um, because some of them are just so bad, but we are actually having a very difficult time finding ones that fit because everything has the handles on the side. We want ones that just have like the cutout where you stick your hands and pull out. Lucy's been, I don't know how many different 
stores and online and but if we could do that then maybe they'll get a little taller you know but it's just to put a regular trash can in then it gets crunched i give you a history of them too but I'm, <laughs> but I'm not going to <laughs> i was going to say who was those trash can people <laughs> Because I, some I of them actually have a, a cement plant, uh, they have space a plaque and they have the a bottom. plaque on oh, them. So that's <laughs> right. Eventually, we sold them to make oh. money for the plaques. Yeah. I'm going to sell trash cans. People got their plaque. Hey. Okay. Yeah, and some of those companies aren't around. All right. Remember, we will not meet in June, but we will be at the commission conference on the 22nd. You will be getting an email probably from the city manager's office. Um, with all the information, if you haven't already, you've got to see if the date. 